Well, welcome back to the Real Estate and More Show. I'm your host, Michael Hatfield. Today, investments and your real estate is a very special show. So accordingly, we have a very special guest. All has heard his name, his radio and television shows, a well-known radio host of Don't Invest and Forget, a financial advisor, retired by the way, for more than 30 years, a good friend. I have frequent guest Pat Vitucci on the show, and he is just amazing and a person ready to share his knowledge and wealth on financial investments and real estate welcome back to the show pat michael thanks so much for having me it's always it's always fun being on your show yeah pat you know if we were to go back 40 years in the bay area what would you have changed regarding your real estate investments well i was in, i was in the fourth grade 40 years ago so let me think about that uh, you know uh, seriously um it's all about having a plan and if you have a plan certainly making adjustments to it over the years because life throws you curves as you know children come and grandchildren come and and your career goes left it goes right it goes down it goes up so lots of um, surprises some good some not so good Um, but I think having a plan and recalibrating it as you go through all the all the hoopla um, and of course, diversification, that's always real important. Mm-hmm. You know, real estate is certainly kind of the foundation that you build as a young young fa- family. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really uh, a place to, to create your, your life, your family. But guess what? It's also an investment that historically has had a fantastic return. Never can guarantee that tomorrow. Uh, markets go up, markets go down, but generally speaking, particularly here in California, uh, it's been a superlative market for my whole lifetime. I've been here on the West Coast for 40 years, having grown up on the East Coast. But uh, uh, life in California still is is a pretty cool spot. Yeah, we've got problems. We've got issues. Uh, name one part of the country that doesn't. But uh, So we're blessed with, uh, first of all, being in, in the USA, and secondarily, being in, in a area where the where the weather and the culture is still a pretty cool spot don't you think i do i do you know going back if i were to say 40 years ago i would have probably done a better job at my investing real estate wise as well as plan wise uh, having a plan is absolutely essential and even if it goes sideways at least you, you can develop another plan but having real estate and looking back you know gosh if we would have uh put in uh, all of our nickels and pennies and dimes into real estate back in um, 40 years ago, we would be extremely wealthy, or I, <clears throat> I would be anyway. I, I, I bought a home. Why didn't I buy two homes? Yeah. Right? Because uh, then you, your net worth would have been, you know, essentially double because uh, who would have thought the, the prices we're looking at today? I mean, I talk to friends who live in Indiana, and they look at our housing prices, and, you know, he's got, my friend's got a four bedroom, three bath on an acre of land and on a good day it's worth 450,000, you know. And he just scratches his head when he, I tell him that size house here in the Bay Area is, you know, a whole lot whole lot more money. So it's uh, our currency in California, Michael, is 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 like the super dollar. It's not the dollar. It's it's not the not the American dollar that the Indiana friend has, but um, that's just the way it is and uh, we're blessed with Silicon Valley we're blessed with a lot of great industry and uh, it's been a, a kind of the epicenter for the world certainly for its for um, computers and and uh, and the whole high-tech world you know um, Pat you've sold your business and you're happy in retirement you're actually uh, looking at the fruits of your labor over decades of executing the plan that you had. And you spent a lot of years uh, advising people how to set up um, their financial plan, whether or not they be young people or whether or not they be people that are already in retirement. And we have essentially uh, home buyers that are young people, which you would make a plan for, especially involving real estate. <clears throat> as well as other investments. And then you also have the retired people that are out there that are our potential sellers. So 
you know what what would you think now to make a plan for each one of these the the home buyers that are young as opposed to a plan for the home buyer uh, sellers that are older yeah I, I had a great career I loved the, I love the, the whole financial planning process I was blessed with lots of wonderful clients that stayed with me for 30 plus years uh, so that young couple you mentioned young people are in kind of the contribution phase they're adding to their their 401k they're buying their first house maybe they're moving up to their second house uh, and so they're and they're paying out tuition bills and you know maybe heavy mortgage payments maybe a car payment so that's when they're contributing and they're building their net worth hmm. the other couple you cited the the soon to be retiree or a, a retired person they begin to start their distribution phase. So they're taking money out of their 401k instead of putting money in. Provided they have some. Yeah. Provided they have some. That's, yeah. always, that's always nice. Maybe they decided on a reverse mortgage. Maybe they're going to sell the big house and move to the small house. Uh, do you need to, does that couple, retired couple, need to live in the expensive Bay Area or can they move 100 miles away and buy twice the house for half the price? Gosh, I can't, I can't tell you. But uh, you know, as a financial advisor, it would seem to be a real challenge to to uh, work with the young folks and develop their plan for them so that they can execute on it. At the same time, working with people that are already in retirement and they're trying to maintain what they have to move forward with it. It just seems like it would be a, a really good challenge, don't you think? You know, we, we, we work with some really smart people. I mean, PhDs and all kinds of fields are very smart. And it's amazing how some money is not easy to understand for a lot of people. Yeah. Fortunately, Jake gave me job security for for 30, 30 years. And here's a couple sitting in front of me with, with uh, academic records that, that, that um, make my academic record look pathetic. But nevertheless, they were struggling with this thing called money, a thing called real estate. What what do I do with my real estate? Mm. I have one home, I have two homes, I have three, whatever, whatever the case is. So it's not it's not common sense, Michael. And you would think, my gosh, if you have a PhD or, or a master's degree or a bachelor's degree, you'd think, wow, money is certainly an easy thing, but amazingly it 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 you've got to distill it down to that plan that we spoke of. And executing on a plan, revisiting the plan, and not going too far off the path because that's when even really smart people get in trouble with money. They start spending 105, 110 percent what they make. They start buying all kinds of things, toys. We're you know we're all subject to buying our toys that are are expensive. They buy them on on uh, credit. Um, so now all of a sudden their monthly nut becomes pretty unmanageable despite them making a boatload of money. You know, an interesting thing about real estate is that there's several elements that um, allow us to take advantage of it. The first element is you get to live in the home. You know, you get to raise your children, you have a place that they can go to school that's really nice normally and then you also get to enjoy something that most people don't think a lot about and that's tax benefits the mortgage interest deduction you know you you would have been paying rent and that money would have just been flying out the window with a mortgage interest deduction of course it has limits uh, on it but with a mortgage interest deduction you're talking about being able to displace the money or reallocate the money you'd be paying for rent over to uh, your taxable income so my gosh, you're going to pay the same amount. Why not get it uh, as a reduction to your um, taxable income? Yeah, that's just one. What about uh, what about your depreciation on the structure on your home? Twenty six and a half years, according to Spider Man's CPA that I had on the show a few weeks back. Um, you know, got twenty six and a half years. You can take and depreciate, which is a non cash uh, deduction, you've got that great deduction that you can use too to reduce any taxable income that you have that's paying you from one of the big tech companies. When you sell it, you got the gain or the loss um, uh, feature that uh, you don't have to pay too much on. So, I mean, it's there's so much uh, to to have with owning your home as, a, as a, uh, opposed to not. Yeah, I, I think the, the brilliance of our tax system strikes you very strongly when you go to Europe 
when you go to Spain, Italy, and France, and you see these old couple hundred, three, four, five hundred year old, old homes. Um, and so the, the motivators in Europe do not exist, the ones that you just described in this country. So the brilliance of having that, that uh, motivation to buy a home because of all, all the huge tax benefits. Wow. You get to, you get to uh, deduct part of the interest in most cases. Generally, it, it appreciates. So it, it's a pretty brilliant system that, that's not paralleled, surprisingly, in other countries. And here we are just, you know, a 200 and some odd year old country compared to Europe, which are, you know, 500, 1,000 year old. And the, the motivation of, the, of our systems, of our economic systems, is profoundly different hmm. and wonderfully productive because it, it gets down to what's going to motivate you and your wife to buy, extend yourself in this very scary thing. You buy a, a house and get a giant mortgage payment. What's the motivation? And when you distill it down to the tax benefits, it's, it's mo in many cases, it, it's a no-brainer, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just recently they came up with um, a new law that's uh, regarding auxiliary dwelling units. And this is really kind of amazing because it allows in the state of California, if the city that you live in or the county opts into it, they allow you to build a, uh, an ADU unit, which is usually 800 to 1,000, maybe 1,200 square feet on your property to be used for your in-laws that are aging or for a backyard cottage that you could even rent to someone. Uh, it's, a, it's a heck of a feature, and but the real cool part about it is now, in law in the state of California, you are actually able to say this is a condominium i'm going to sell this condominium as if it's a, a piece of property separate from my main property yeah that's that's a new a new uh, feature that's what what maybe five seven eight years old i'm not sure no, eight months old <laughs> oh it's okay <laughs> yeah it's that new yeah and so uh that puts a whole new opportunity for aging parents uh young folks who who find buying houses economically not feasible so mm -hmm. you let the your son or daughter stay in your ADU for X years and let them build up equity build up some savings so it's a nice way to help mom and dad or at the other end of the spectrum your son or your daughter and uh, and and guess what they're close by but far enough away that you can still have some privacy right and so no I think it's a it's a nice uh, movement and it looks to be a pretty popular one at that. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's the other one now that they call JADUs, and that's where it's a small unit. It can be designated <clears throat> within your home itself, and uh, it works the same way pretty much. It's uh, incredible, and it's normally up to 500 square feet. It's a relatively small unit, but we could put one of those in your front of your room, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think I'll, I think I'll, I'll pass on that. But for those who are motivated and there's a need, right now I don't have a need for it. But um, no, it satisfies um, um, lots of issues. And maybe there's some, some rent you can charge to help offset um, your overhead. And if you're about to retire, you can factor that into your income. Maybe it's... A thousand, twelve hundred a month, whatever it is, uh, every little bit helps. And um, if it helps the recipient and it helps the person who 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 went through the hoops to build it, um, I think there's some there's some real merit there. That's fantastic. You're listening to uh, Real Estate and More, and on our show today we have a very special guest, a well-known uh, radio host and television personality and financial advisor retired uh, he bothers him a little bit when i say retired because he's such an active guy pat Matucci. so we're uh, working real hard here to put out some interesting information about real estate and investment plans pat some of the um 
primary characteristics of home sellers are they, as we mentioned earlier, they're of retirement age. What would you do? Um, what would you do to recommend them uh, in the future, just as a friendship kind of base, because you don't do it for money now? Uh, what would you recommend to, that they do with the limited resources that they have in order to move forward in retirement? Well, my speech for 30 years was: if you're retired and your portfolio is not as robust as you would have liked because issues came up and supporting mom or dad, kids, grandkids, whatever, uh, maybe it's time to trade in your expensive Bay Area 2x4s, as I put it, yeah, and sell your home and either buy down to a cottage, maybe even rent. What about renting? You, you know, you, you can't let your ego not consider renting. Yeah, we all like to have uh, home ownership pride, but sometimes rent Renting an apartment or a small condo makes sense. Or moving to a different part of the country, a different part of the world. Mm -hmm. Costa Rica, Portugal. Um, of course, there's the common ones, Texas and Florida and, and Washington and Iowa. And uh, Coeur, Coeur d'Alene is beautiful, if you, don't, if you don't mind the rough the rough winters. So there's a, you've got to be creative and take a stand, step back and say, okay, how can I increase my monthly cash flow without compromising my lifestyle too much? Do I want to be closer to grandkids or am I okay moving a couple couple states away? The state of Nevada, a no income tax state. Sometimes that little piece can, can make your monthly nut much more affordable. So you've got to, you've got to be creative and, and look at all the options um, maybe you're a beach person, maybe you're a mountain person, maybe you're fluent in Spanish, so Spain or Portugal looks really attractive. That, that was a pretty radical steps, but people are doing it. I mean, Costa Rica is a big expat community. Recently, I was in Mexico, lots of Americans, lots of expats in uh, Puerto Vallarta, Cabo, et cetera, et cetera. So there's some really favorable places to live, fun places to live. You're going to trade off your your local doctor. You're going to trade off your local hospital. Maybe some friends you won't be as close to. Yeah. yeah. So it's a it's a collection of trade offs. You you can re retire here, there, or everywhere. You know you could spend a, a little bit of time in Hawaii, a little bit of time in Tahoe, a little bit of time in Mexico. Yeah. You could do the San Diego Trail. Reminds me of somebody that I know that uh, <laughs> yeah. did it. But we did one of our first shows that we ever did when um, we swapped seats was retire here, there, and everywhere. Yep. And that is a really good episode to to listen to, uh, folks. If you get a chance, go back and uh, pick that episode up. Pat had some really great advice and uh, for those who might be retiring. So uh, just something to think about. So you would sit down with a, a home seller, potential home seller that isn't wanting to move right now, and you would say, here's the plan that I suggest for you. Maybe you should sell this, take this money, and move to another place of, of more moderate, moderate uh, uh, cash requirements. You know, Michael, we're not going to live forever. And, you know, we say, okay, our parents lived to this age and my grandparents lived to that age. And, and that's all okay. But lifestyle has a big impact on how long we're going to live. And whether you figure 10 years, 20 years, 30, whatever it is, <coughs> How do you want to spend the rest of your life? And do you want to have the stress of not having enough money? Stress will definitely shorten your life. Historically, stress is not a good factor on our bodies. And so you've got to look at it pragmatically, look at it in totality, and what you're giving up and what you're getting, if it's if there's some comfort there, uh, maybe it's time to, to pull the trigger. Well, what about the uh, the home buyers, the people with uh, that are working for the tech company? They're usually 26 to 43 years old. We call them millennial generation. They have two Teslas in the garage. They, they rent at high values. They enjoy their lives. What do you have for a financial plan for those home buyers that are sitting on the sidelines right now because mortgage interest rates are almost 7%, which is, as you and I both know, is not really that extravagant compared to what they could be. 
well, and, and we're coming off a period where they were two and three percent. So we, the, that was fiction. That wasn't real. That was all contrived. Seven is kind of the, the fifty-year average, right, Mike? Yeah, seven seven five. I think it was. Yeah. So you've you've got to look at um, what kind of buy can I have today because interest rates are high. Maybe there are less homes selling, and you can always refi if markets do come back down to four five you know hopefully even three I, heaven knows it will ever see three again but you could always refi but you got to get in 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 the game you got to get in it and if homes appreciate two three five percent whatever that number is you've got to participate in paying rent you're on the on the sidelines you got to get in put your helmet on and put the shoulder pads on and start start kicking and and hitting and um you know, 10 years from now, it'll look like a blip. You won't even know you bought high or you bought low because it'll be smoothed out over the years. Those those cycles tend to get smoothed out in, in the long run. You know what's interesting in the Bay Area right now? We have a severe shortage in homes available for sale, but yet the buyers that we have haven't really pushed it. They haven't been so robust unless there's been uh, you know, a dip in the mortgage rates down to something they consider to be uh, acceptable to them. However, today, just today, coming out uh, from The Economist at Realtor.com, they're saying that there is a severe shortage, a severe shortage. In essence, it says the U.S. is in a long term housing shortage with construction of new homes failing to keep pace with a growing population. They say there's 7.2 million homes short and that means that nearly 18 million households have been formed over the past decade 18 million but only 10 million single family homes were constructed during the same period of time and it could take if builders produce at a 50% more increase overall in the country, it would take until 2029 mm. to equalize it out. So again, in the Bay Area, we have a tremendous shortage of, uh, of property available for sale. And this is why I would like you to convince some sellers to <laughs> trade in those expensive uh, <laughs> two-by-fours in the Bay Area. Yeah. What do you think? Well, you know, it's it's our home is 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 our castle, and and if not being really pushed, we hate to make radical choices. Um, so we're kind of gluttons for punishment, if you will. We just kind of stick with it because it's easier than it, it takes a brave soul to make make a move, and um, but keep doing the same thing over and over again and not, not and expecting different results you know what you know what you know what that's called so we've got to really step back and I would encourage your listeners to get up meet with a financial plan planner and get a plan and get a get a couple opinions get two or three opinions and it's interesting how maybe it'll be a, a blend of the two or three that you get that that is the plan that you are comfortable with everybody's different I'm, I interviewed thousands of couples and thousands of individual people, and it's it always strikes me as interesting that you know some people are legacy planning driven. They want they want to leave their children x x dollars yeah. without without and sacrificing whatever they need to to make sure that happens. A next couple comes in, and they want their last check to bounce, so they they don't care if their net worth is zero mm -hmm. when when on when they when they eventually pass. We, we, it it always it always is interesting to me that um, people don't have that succession plan, especially entrepreneurs. They want to, they think they're going to die with their boots on, and you got to, mm -hmm. you got to, you got to get out of it. And you're, you know, if you don't have a succession plan, especially if you're an entrepreneur, or if you don't have a living trust or a will or healthcare directive, oh boy. all those things. All those all those legal instruments uh, that attorneys create. Um, I think when you go through that kind of trust planning and wills and healthcare directives, it's kind of a wake-up call to a lot of people. Who say, "Wow, 
this is where my my assets are going but I want to enjoy them for the next X years while mm -hmm. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. So I, I think sometimes creating that that estate plan is sometimes a motivator to essentially clearly understand I'm not taking it with me. It's leading, being left behind, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's for sure. So, so I see that... Uh, we talk about everybody being different. Well, that's for sure. And one of the things that we think about is that the buyers are just a different group. And of course, they're individuals, but they're a different group. They have different interests than the sellers that we know are of retirement age, and they have their own set of interests before you start looking at each one of those interests. So it's important to get with uh, your financial planner uh, and work through these to where you have a plan. And I, I have to include myself. Pat, are there any last thoughts that you would like to conclude with today? What a, a great session. Good no, to know stuff. Uh, no, you always uh, tickle my, my, uh, my thought process and that's that's always good it's it, it it's let's look real estate has got to be the foundation you build your net worth on and everything else is uh, it's like the christmas tree you put it in the stand okay then you start hanging ornaments on it and your 401k the 529 for the children's education uh the estate planning we, uh, tools that we that we uh, talked about all those components um uh, creates that 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 plan that i think is critical that you revisit you pull it out of your shelf and dust off the the cover and look through it again so wait a minute i have to change this and i have to change it of course you do because your successor trustee is no longer your best friend or mm -hmm. they they the person is is uh deceased so you've got to re revisit that plan and um and that's what i think is the important part of uh of kind of uh, anchoring where you want to be in the next three to five years. Well, Mr. Vitucci, I have to tell you, I really appreciate you being on the show today. You, you're Thanks. always an inspiration to everyone that listens. So as Mr. Vitucci has been in the financial planning side of consulting for more than 30 years, he recognizes the importance of how a family's wealth can be enhanced by savvy investing in real estate. Investing in your home or otherwise before, during, or even after one's retirement, retirement is important. So if you wish to buy or sell real estate, give my office a call at 925-322-7775. We'd love to help you. I hope you've enjoyed our show today on investments and your real estate. Thank you for being on the show again, Pat. You're a great guy. Thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. You've been listening to The Real Estate and More Show. I've been your host, Michael Hatfield, and it's been my honor to have been here with you where we talk with great people about important topics and about real estate. Listen to archived Real Estate and More shows at michaelhatfieldhomes.com slash radio. The Real Estate and More Show is also podcast on demand on all the major podcast platforms as well. I'm a ho your host, Michael Hatfield. I hope you'll tune in next week. And in the meantime, Time. Please have a blessed week. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. The views and opinions expressed are based on current economic and market conditions and are subject to change. Information on the show provided for illustrator purposes only and does not constitute professional or legal advice. Information from sources deemed reliable, but accuracy and completeness not guaranteed. Michael Hatfield and the Michael Hatfield Remax team have no liability for information discussed on the show. Consult with qualified professionals prior to taking action.